Well, given my perspective, I'd compare us to the 2004 election. Uh, and because I was, uh, I worked in that election, and I would say compared, that was a very successful election. Compared to that election and where we are today, I'd give us an A. In all departments, in all areas, we've beefed up capacity in absentee, in voter registration, in the way we've designed our election supplies for the booth workers on election day, in the quality of the polling locations, in the disability access. In every area of the Board of Elections, we've made, I think, real measurable improvements over an election from four years ago, which itself was a very big success. Do you feel that you were a big part of some of those improvements? Yeah, you live and learn. After the 2004 presidential election, we called all of our 2,000 booth workers together and we in the following year, in January of the following year, and we said, what, how, did, how did it go? Give us some feedback. And they told us things like the signs at the tables uh, were too hard to find your election table, so people waited 15 minutes in the wrong line before they went to the correct line. So we improved the signage. In this election, we're going to have greeters at the front door to help people direct them to the right table. Because anytime a person waits 20 minutes in the wrong line, they get hot. And uh, so we've emptied that. Uh, we fixed that problem. Another issue that we listened to is that booth workers said getting the ballots off the pads were too hard. So instead of having a staple bound ballot tablet, we've gone to a gum bound tablet with one stub instead of two. The poll book judge then would have to write out 800 names and addresses of every single voter. We've eliminated that and gone to a pre printed poll book and redesigned that. Not only to save time, but to make it so that voters can be processed in a lot more fast. A faster and a more efficient way. So in all these areas, you, le you learn from your experiences and you make the changes. And uh, I think we've done that in a lot of ways. Now did you, are all those your ideas personally, or these are just a culmination from different people? Uh, all of the, a combination of different people. Okay. Feedback that we get from the booth workers asking for things that we say, and as a group, we say, how can we get those things done? And so then we just figure out ways to do it. Some, everybody contributes, whether it's our uh, IT department that contributed some ideas, whether it's the registration or absentee department. Uh, some of them come from the administrators. Some are just direct suggestions uh, from the booth workers. You know, for years they've asked for thumbtacks. We finally gave them thumbtacks and allows them to post things on the walls at some polling locations better. What, what are you bringing to the Board of Elections that, that's important, that we need? Why should you be in your position? Well, uh, two things. I have a long background in politics in terms of working as ele in elections. I worked uh, in 1987 at the Board of Elections, spent the in-between 20 years as a candidate many times. So I understand the political process from the customer side. But I think my biggest strength administratively is I'm a process guy. I look at processes and I think I have a pretty good skill at saying how is this going to work. I, when you ask me are there areas in which we're deficient that I would like to see improved, I would say that the key thing still gets down to uh, booth worker training. Uh, I think that there are some things that we can do with using technology to have online booth worker training. One of the things I think we very much need to do in Summit County and across the state is to be able to develop training for booth workers that they can watch at home, take tests at home, and so that we can certify them for competency on the election procedures. It is far more complicated to run an election as a booth worker than it has ever been in the past. The records that are required as a result of law changes and court case changes make it very difficult to be a booth worker. So when the voter goes in on election day, they say, I'm here, here's my ID, give me my ballot. Well, it's not nearly that simple, unfortunately. And so the booth workers have to know that. And you know, they typically only work two or three elections in a given course of a year. Well, if you you do something two or three times, it, it's pretty hard to stay fresh on the many intricate details that you have to do when you get these certain special circumstances. And I think uh, online booth worker training program costs a little bit of money, probably about $100,000, $150,000 to do it once and then to keep it fed. But I think the benefits of it for, for the voting public would be uh, well worth it. But it, it is obvious we are in a season of disagreement right now amongst the board. Boards of elections in Ohio are divided half Democrat, half Republican for a reason, not by accident, but on purpose. We're there to create transparent elections where Democrats watch Republicans and Republicans watch Democrats. They're responsible for producing the election together. Therefore, th that shared responsibility of governing elections makes them both work together. But at the same time, they scuffle and disagree when they think that there are issues that are adversely affecting their candidates or might adversely affect their candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as we get past this and these new board members settle into their positions and create some operational precedence for themselves, the, the, the conflict that is being um, reported on at the board will subside to a point 
over time. Mm -hmm. But there'll always be a little bit of conflict. Sure. I mean, it's always out there, no matter what board of election you're in. It's always out there, and it's always waiting behind the curtain to pop up. The Democrat and Republican board members are officers in their political parties. They nominate for full-time employment employees that they know, that they're confident, have the partisan interests at heart. And, and the reason, and, and they're supposed to. So they have to, it's a twofold. You have to be competent and hardworking, but you also have to have some sort of party affiliation. Mm -hmm. And so what we do when we have an employee that is of average quality, we work around it. As a director and deputy director, we have to work around that. We can let the board know that we have some ineffective staff. It's up to them to the responsibility to deal with it. Uh, but I'll, I'll be candid with you. Boards of election, including in Summit County, are slow to deal with trouble employees. Uh, be, they just wait for the two-year reappointment. We all get reappointed every two years. And typically that's when uh, performance issues are addressed at the Board of Elections. We don't do personnel evaluations at the Board of Elections. Uh, we have never adopted such a thing at the Board of Elections. I think it would benefit us over the long haul, but getting there would be very controversial.